Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Um, my guest this morning, because we're going to get into it, uh, my guest this morning, uh, Mr. Lainka Ola Daniels, lawyer and social commentator. As always, it's a pleasure to have you, Yinka. Thank you. And for um, Mr. GD Ologun. Good morning, Avias. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Jide Ologun, another lawyer and public affairs analyst. As always, Jide, it's a pleasure to have you as well. Thank you very much. Now, we, uh, quite frankly, you can't miss the whole Igbo uh, saga, uh, Sunday Adeyemo, a.k.a. Sunday Igbo uh, Chief Sunday uh, Adeyemo, a.k.a. Sunday Igbo um, by which I mean, you know, we just didn't know what exactly uh, was going on. He had been declared wanted by the GSS, and then news came that uh, he had resurfaced in Kotonu, and um, then we got the news that uh, all over social media, that as a matter of fact, he was in Germany. Uh, some variants, he was on his way to Germany. Other variants, he was, uh, you know, he was a uh, plane bound already. Um, but his lawyers, according to the press, say nothing of that sort at all is going on. It didn't stem the flow. There continued to be these stories upon stories. Um, but I, I think now, because the DSS is mums the word as far as DSS is concerned, they're not even contributing to the debate anymore. So um, I don't think if you were to call them up now, they probably would say something like no comment. Um, now, uh, the reports, when you piece them together from all over the newspapers, um, you look at it, and um, it looks like he's yet to be arraigned, but he will uh, be arraigned. Um, much has been made of the legal aspects of this particular case. Maybe we could just, you know, look at that area of the thing. So um, this whole matter about uh, did we act in the right way? Uh, for instance, the Guardian this morning is calling it a diplomatic stalemate in Bene over Igbo's detention and extradition. As you know, we have this you know, extradition you know, uh, understanding. But they say political uh, 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 political, Fugitive. uh, political Fugitive. fugitives have been exempted. L let's talk about that a bit. Would yeah. you like to start, Yinka? Well, um, on the issue of uh, political fugitives, uh, I think so far from what we have um, received or gathered from Benin is really not on that ground. I think that they are asking for that, for asylum, for his asylum, even in Benin. But I don't think we are there yet. But because what Bene is saying is, come, we cannot give you this man. Why? Because he has a case to answer in our country. Perhaps Sonny Boo had done something in Bene that are contravening their own laws. Well, the rumor says, allegedly says, he had uh, uh, um, a uh, Bene Rep um, Republic passport, international passport. How did he get it? That probably he got a, a fake international okay. passport. Which, um, as you say, is, is yeah. a rumor we don't uh, know we, very yes, much. We don't, it, it, yes, we don't have but that fact in that, our hands. That's so, one of those yes. so if social media rumor, rumors. And yeah. we also know that, um, uh, well, from what the little I know about Benin Republic, mm. when it comes to the rule of law, they do not joke with it. <laughs> no, they don't joke with it. Nobody is above the law. The little I know about Benin Republic, I've yes. been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know when it comes to law, they don't joke about it. So uh, if pretty much they are like, not saying pretty, that... Pretty much like us. Yes, if they're saying that we are not giving you this... Aside from all the uh, um, the noise from the Yoruba groups, from different groups to say, no, don't release it to them. This is what they want to do. Uh, but then they are saying, you even have a case to answer. So it is a rumor, an allegation. So if that is true, then you can't blame Bene from carrying out that. So if he has contravened any law, okay, you have to face it. So there. Now the extradition part of it. Now the question is, while Sunday was in Nigeria and his house was raided, to me, sorry, I will call it a coup because you, at that time, Sunday Boa had not been declared wanted. Yeah, how do you mean a coup? No, no, yeah. it can't be a coup. Uh, I'm going somewhere. Oh, in fact, oh, sorry, sorry. They, they no, use the word let, invasion. Let, no, they no, use no, the word no, no, invasion. No, no. Let me, so, so, sorry, you see, if you are not declared someone wanted, two, this person has not been declared a terrorist. Three, this person, in whatever, they have not called him a name that, that 
that that, uh, that cornered him or put him under terrorist act of whatever that he has done that have violated the terrorist act. No, it's not a robber. Why storming his house at the den of the night to arrest such person? That is number one. So when you went to his house to arrest, there were killings and there were all sorts of shootings in this house. It's totally wrong. Okay. Another question so, so is we, 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 I'm, DSS. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to you because I'm, I, I like where you just ended. In your, you know, uh, esteemed opinion, it was totally wrong. Wrong. Uh, now the DSS um, did what it did, um, no doubt because it was acting on its own orders. So um, maybe give me your your perspective uh, on this. Um, and as, as we, well, Yinka used the word coup, but. I suggested that, well, did, did you want to say the word, uh, did you want to say invasion? Um, but he insisted that, no, 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 he's going to stay with what he said. Fine. Uh, give me your take, because um, it's all about these um, uh, uh, agitators, as you know. It's all about agitation. And um, it, how did it get out of hand? And give me, just give me your thoughts on you the know, situation. Ba basically, I will classify this on two sides. We have the state actors and the non-state actors. So if, for example, a group of persons invaded Igbo's house, like the state actors did, it would have been a different thing entirely, like armed robbery, burglary, and things like that. Because, I mean, like yes, it's been, it's been if, revealed. If, if non-state people had, exactly. had did what the and, DSS did, and having then it would be a different story. Exactly. Okay. And having established that, I want to prompt what happened in Nigeria when we woke up and the National Assembly was besieged by some maxed mobile policemen. And when the people requested to know where they came from, obviously through the DSS, that all that from above. So who is that? person giving order from above. All right. We also remember the Python dance in the southeastern part of the country that led to Namdi Kano fleeing. So when it comes to state actors, it's a difficult thing. But for researchers like us, we have always monitored. Now, where the government is trying to nail Chief Sunday Adeyemo is on the allegation of stockpiling ammunition. Which, if established, well, nail, nailing. Uh, I, I mean, um, that's, that that might be the charge. I, I choose that, 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 I, I the have, charge. I, I I own that expression. You want to and use I will the expression explain it for that. nailing. Recall, yeah. When you talk of nail, is that you are going after this person and you must get this person. Uh -huh. Remember that before the chief justice of the Supreme Court was removed, some dramas were prompted that led to the first uh, non-declaration of assets and things like that, and before we knew it, when Magu was to be removed from office, and he is even here to be prosecuted, drama came up. Remember the executive order, so I intentionally brought that up. And remember that before Nam Kanu was rearrested and brought back to Nigeria, a lot of violent activities were going on in the southeastern part of the country, because you will need all this when you want to prosecute, because in the criminal law, a value chain. You need thorough investigation, diligent prosecution, and a committed judiciary. Let's go back to the extradition and the asylum battles that are going on in Benin now. When you talk about extradition, we have signed, we, we are in a treaty with Ghana, Togo, Benin Republic of 1984 on extradition. And when you extradite, you expect that justice to be given. So if there is a doubt, that the person you are extraditing will not get justice. You are not compared. It's a, it's, it's a political and diplomatic exercise. And for those seeking asylum, asylum derives from the Latin word asylia, which means inviolable place. So if the Benin Republic does not release Igboho, the federal government cannot forcefully remove him from there. And those are the battles we have now. And the questions many are asking is that if we can carry out these exercises, talking about the rearrest of Nam Dekano, the arrest of Ibohu in Benin Republic. Why don't you channel it towards the bandits? So I think for the, as well. for the federal uh, government, the, the bandits yes, as well. For the federal government, there is a public relations deficit now because there is what we call perception in public relations 
All right, and that is why some of us have said we have never doubted the capacity of the federal government to carry out the mandate of Section 14, Subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended that says the security of the people and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So it's not a function of priorities. And that can lead us into other issues we may not have the time to discuss here. So when you talk about good governance, government has the power, the resources, the apparatus of office to carry out governance mandate. But how it is being carried now, whether it's on the platform of justice, equity, and freedom like we have in Section 17 of our Constitution or not, it's a different thing. Okay. And that is where we are now as a people. You, you know, um, Yiga, thank you. Um, some of the things you said, uh, I, I sort of want to borrow some of the words. It is well known that governments, and I don't think the Nigerian government is any exception, um, usually have awesome power um, to achieve their aims, do what they do, and uh, sometimes government will do what it needs to do by um, any and all means necessary. Uh, of course, the lawyers are watching, the watchdogs are watching, uh, and if they feel that it is too much, uh, governments generally, you know, just revert to the say, a secret service. You know, so because, simply because things need to be done sometimes that are quite messy, will not stand up before the rule of law, will not, so they don't even want to own it. If, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that. So um, I, I just wanted to, in the, with that background and um, the kind of, I don't know, the reticence of government before they finally, beyond bearing their fangs, mm. actually clamp jaws down. When we say, uh, when we say government uh, um, can be fought or government has so much power. Government has awesome uh, power. Know, awesome power mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. This power is derived from somewhere. I know. It, it no, should be awesome no, power. No, on, yeah, it should yeah, be power no, under the law. Thank you. No, but I'm telling you, you but, no. but, but governments have secret services now. True. Those but ones don't go true, by the true, rule of law. True, but then, no. You see, that is the error. Because they should also go by the rule of law. And we are aware law. In, yes, no, yes. Every, you see, every government is peculiar mm -hmm. to each state. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you know, even uh, in the uh, advanced countries and all that. All governments are peculiar. In 2016, when the DSS stormed on the judiciaries, okay. judiciary is supposed to be an arm of government. Mm -hmm. When they stormed on the judiciary and they went in the middle of the night to arrest judges, mm -hmm. some people were shouting. Of course. Good there was a howl of, no, no, no. Uh, there was also a howl of protest. Of course. Of course. Yes, we had that. Some yes. of us. There was some, a howl of protest. Uh, okay, I was about saying that some people kept shouting, good. But some of us were saying, <laughs> you want to start what you cannot finish. Now you are ailing. Some, some people were actually ailing the government. And we are telling them that. This government that you are ailing, it will come to your doorstep. At that time, nobody will be able to come to your aid. Because when they were picking judges in the middle of the night, and we're saying, look, at the arm of this, this is an arm of government, independent arm of government. Then you then send DSS to them to arrest them. They were arrested. They were taken, even if whatever they had done was wrong, probably, okay, the allegations that some of them are still in court and all that, they were issues. But the way you, the route you took, you didn't follow the law. And again, the DSS are deviated from the assignment because the laws that give them power to operate, the acts that gives DSS power to operate, stated what they should do as an agency. But what do we see them do? Okay, Marie, I have been to a suya spot to buy suya somewhere in Glover Court. Mm -hmm. And DSS were surrounding somebody that came to buy suya. And I asked, in fact, people, they have to move everybody away. I said, no way. You will, you, will, you will take your turn. I will buy it before you go ahead. That was when people started talking. That if you wanted to buy suya, then send someone to pick the suya and not come with DSS to harass everybody at the public at the suya spot. Is that the job of the DSS? Okay. I, I hear what you're saying. Um, but part of the complication of this is that, look, DSS people don't usually speak to the public, unfortunately. They, they, have, they have a PR person, but they will not usually comment. They will not usually, they won't comment at all until they retire. Then we might be able to get you know, a retired DSS you know, person who will speak. But uh, they don't say anything, and they have, uh, I would guess now, they have this notion of 
uh, they will always come and defend when it is said that the DSS, you know, went against the law or exceeded the law. Uh, but they still have this whole matter about any means necessary once they've been given the order. And clearly, they wouldn't have taken it upon themselves to act. Uh, they would have been acting on, under orders. And that's where, you know, people begin to question the legal aspects of what's going on here. See, if you're going to come out into the public this much, there are high-flying secret service things that go on all over the world where, 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 where people do things that government would have told them beforehand, should you be caught, we will disown you. I mean, that's, that, that's, oh, the, nature okay. of, that's the nature of civil service. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. But this... If you were ordered or you were given directive mm -hmm. to do a particular assignment, mm -hmm. you should take cognizance of the fact that there's a law that gives you power to do what you're doing. Yes. Then why don't you just let your allegiance be for the law and not the individual that is giving you directive? Okay. And that, that is People, the challenge. you have to do your work, uh -huh. do your work under the comfort of the law. Uh, oh, but uh, let's, let's cut our, our minds uh, back, yeah. Uncle Yori, that there was an NBA uh, conference mm -hmm. where the president and commander in chief insinuated that the rule of law may become subject to national security concerns. Mm. And like you said, there was an applause. But some of us were worried that the very essence of justice, of freedom, of prosperity, of good governance is the rule of law. The rule of law means the law prevails. And we have a very practical example. Recently in the United States of America, Donald Trump, who was in the White House, enjoined himself was not willing to leave when after the elections and he, he, he was not re-elected. And he, he, he turned everywhere, the executive, the judiciary, the legislative arms, and they said no. We have a system in this country that amplifies the position of the rule of law, that you just have to allow the rule of law. And I asked a very Never serious question. You see how it all turned out? With Trump Despite attempt, that, they contained it. They, they, That's they, what they we did. are saying about now, the state actions. I, I, I'm going to interrupt you. For, yeah. Forgive me, but you, you will continue. Because Victor from Wari came on the line, and I don't want to uh, keep him waiting. Good morning, Victor in Wari. Victor in Wari, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, quickly, quickly. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning. I just want to put in a comment. Because uh, sometimes I wonder why some of these are analysts. To come on, on, on what, what was the point you wanted to make, Victor? What is the point yeah, you wanted to the make? Man, the, the man in cap, yes, I mean, is um, he's condemning the action of the DSS, uh, concerning the you know, uh, you call it invasion, you call it a coup. I want to ask, what is the place of a sting operation? Are you okay. saying the government cannot carry out a sting operation? We need to put the dictionary and find the meaning of a sting operation. That was a sting operation. It's an operation designed to arrest a criminal, a, someone that is committing a criminal act. And that was what the DSS did. How can people come online? I mean, mis mis misinforming people. That was a sting operation. Okay. So um, when, when you say it was a sting operation, um, what's your authority, sir? Hello, sir. What's your authority? To call it a sting operation. I mean, are you a professional and um, you knowledgeable in the distinctions between these terms? In other words, what's yeah. your authority, I, sir? I am not. I am not. I am not a professional in that area. So we know. We all know what sting of. Is, is okay. That, is, okay. That's what, what I wanted to clear. I just wanted to clarify that. I take your comment, but wanted to clarify that, um, you know, I, I hear you, and thank you for contributing Sorry. the point. Let's look at it. Sorry, so that we don't mislead the, uh, the viewers. Uh, can I quickly correct something because uh, of this last statement uh, from our guest? Um, you see, it's clear. Different agencies were created for different purposes. We have the police. We have the DSS, DSS, which is more like the CIA, then we have, um, uh, we have the NIA, like that. So we have different agencies, and we have the EFCC. So there are different laws that were enacted to give them powers to do whatever they have to do. The job DSS went to do at Igbo's house is really the job of the police, not DSS. 
Okay. Just to correct that. Okay. To let him, we are not saying no one has said that government it, it, cannot. Not. That's why no. we yeah. are saying the DSS is not in a position because the what the laws that give them power didn't give them such power to do that. The police is enough you to do know, that job. You, you remember we were told by the DSS itself, no less, that um, it was a joint operation. What they Reportedly, did, what they did. Yes. by content analysis, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be a joint operation. Mm -hmm. But I think the police backed out. I mean, I read something about that. You see, so, and these things are critical. Is, no the, is, is the police able no, to no back, one is back saying. out? Is the police able to back out on on you know a lawful uh, uh, what is it now assignment? It's, uh, you know, we uh, like I said, we don't have all the time. We, uh, have, neither have do we have all the facts. The neither do we have all the facts. Experiences in Boko Haram campaign in the northeastern part of the country. Remember that some soldiers even ran into into uh, Cameroon, you see, so, and, and reportedly also, many soldiers have voluntarily left the system, perhaps because they are not comfortable with what has been going on. So we are just okay, bringing out. Okay, do you believe that? Because, yeah, these kind of stories are, I mean, do, do, do. They are documented, sir. Okay. I'm not, I'm not uh, imagining of, them. Of, of you so Google them, they are there. Because of, of soldiers leaving through the service. You Google them, they, they are, are there. Okay. It, it, it's, it's documented. Uh, let, let me t let me take Bright. Good morning, Mr. Bright in Enugu. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling, sir. Yeah, uh, I want to comment on this uh, issue of uh, Imboho and the DSS. And where we are at right now, to speak a bit of Americanism, <laughs> that is uh, with uh, Igboho, you know, still, according to all the news, in Kutonu. Hello? Yes, carry on, sir. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, I want to, I commend the two gentlemen there that are uh, talking to you on this very issue. Uh, the thing is, that what I want to confirm from them is, DSS going to Ball's house at that time to the ninth was it backed by the Nigerian law, the rule of law. Because I've seen in other cases where lawyers came to support what the DSS did. And they read it from the Constitution, the Nigeria Constitution itself. And, uh, uh, the the, the man was saying that when you refuse, when you refuse to, 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 to attend to them, they can break and come to you if they have gotten information about you. Because those DSS are not like the police or the road. They want their information, secret information. They all might have, might have been planning something which the government has prior knowledge about. And the government has every right to go and pick the ball at any time of the day. That is what the official said. If there's a lawyer there, and the lawyer can confirm if what we are saying is different. Because the same lawyer in this country that said something in the same constitution that we all are following. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, Bright. Um, I don't know. Did you get yeah, uh, I do, where I do. it was going? I okay. Do. Okay. Do. okay. Okay. Let, let me say this. There's no way under the law that gives the SS such power to either coup or invade or storm in somebody's at the dead of the night. What? If the person is not under the provision under such sections that give them whether it's an arm robber, a terrorist, um, um, uh, a threat to the national security of a nation. Those are the rooms, those are the grounds in which they can storm at any time. But the question I've been asking and no one I've been able to answer because there is no answer for it is, as there have been any time Igbo was invited? None. I, I said I arrest warrant because now we are talking about the ammunition, the arms that were found in Igbo's house that the DSS were parading. If DSS had gone during the day and they had given Igbo, whether, the, uh, um, um, whether there's uh, a warrant of arrest or not, okay. but they had gone during the day. You've used that and, magic word because I was going to whether, come to that magic word yes. <laughs> of, of a warrant. And I have used it yes. before and yes. I have been told point blank 
the DSS does not need a warrant. They don't. That is the reason why I said whether there's a warrant or not. But if they had gone during the day, now tell me, then you now come with ammunition that could be seen. Then would somebody say, because now Ibo is saying that there is nothing like that in his house. That he didn't have any hands. Now, it's not your word against mine. And that's now, what the courts are for. Because they, thank you, because they that's have, what the have gone in the middle of the night that no one will see what they have done. Uh -huh. If they have gone during the day, everybody has seen you, you had arrested the man, or see whatever you have seen. And uh, you have, I uh, hear you, but these security outfits around the world choose their own time. There's they choose like, their I, I, own I time said, for maximum I, I, effectiveness. I have, said, mm -mm, I have said there is no way in our law that gives such power to DSS to go okay. at that time for someone that had not been declared I hear you. I a hear terrorist. You. I hear you. But I also wanted you to uh, you know, understand, and I'm sure you know already, that mm. security outfits around the world choose their own time. They might, they, they, they're not going to come when you're at for your instance, brightest. For I'm instance, not if you have been on the wanted they, list. They, they come when you're chief. If you but been, all of this, we're holding up Mr. Solomon in a good day, and <laughs> we apologize. <laughs> Mr. Solomon in Akute. Go, go ahead, sir. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Okay. My take is this. If there is good governance, if things are going fairly well in the country, there is justice. It won't be an issue. It won't be an issue. But because the Nigerian state is not run on fair play, the Nigerian state is not working for everybody as it ought to work for everybody. Naturally, human beings become agitated. That's it. What we should be fighting for is that whoever is in government should try and govern well. If you govern well, it won't be an issue. If you govern well, the Islam can won't be an issue. Well, you know that yourself. From the man who is our head of state, president, down to the list of people in government. It's all the same injustice. Appointment, everything is just not right. Sure. So the justice is not there. What, what there's no justice, which, which role of law are you talking about when there's no justice? Okay. That's the thing, my brother. Okay. Good government, we don't have it. Thank you very much for calling in, Solomon. Appreciate your call. And um, this, is, um, this is something that's been said over and over and over again, that we have these agitations all over, because, all over, all over the place because of the perception of uh, inequity, of injustice, you know. Uh, indeed, outright sectionism. We yeah, just go as far as that. Uh, there's nothing we haven't heard. As somebody say, as they say on social media, uh, media nothing we must not go see for gate. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, we've, but, but the point that Solomon was making out there, it, it's been made, and now people are saying that we have to be very, very careful with this situation, both in the case of Nam Dekano and in the case of uh, Sunday Eboho. People are saying that this is uh, eminent people from society. You that this is something that's going to have to be handled with great care. Uh, and what, what should that great care be? Make way for good governance. What is good governance? The engagement of the resources of the nation referred to as commonwealth for common good. And the agitations will disappear. It's as simple as that. Let, there, let everyone be subject to the law. Let everyone benefit from the goodies of the land. I, I've, I've asked this question over, like you mentioned, and let me put them on the table again. Imagine now that the inflation rate in Nigeria is 6%, that the unemployment rate is 3%, that a bag of rice is 6,500, that dollar is 120 naira, that the pump price of petroleum is 75 naira, that you can travel at 1 a.m., arrive at Okakoko, the capital of the world, my hometown, at 3 a.m., and you are not harassed. You see, you can, you know, you can ask your, your child to go and school in Meduguri. Do you know that right now, schools have been shut down? Yes, yes. Even the festivities, these recent Salah festivities, it affected some it. states were shut down. So if things are working well, where will these agitations come from? I've asked this simple question. Now we are, we are, we are negotiating with Benin Republic. Is Rwanda negotiating to repatriate anybody from anywhere? Is Switzerland dealing with agitations? Is 
in Singapore running helter skelter from bandits. And by the way, the definition of a bandit is an armed robber or a criminal in a in a gang in an isolated and lawless society. Has Nigeria become and, a lawless society? And a part of the These are questions and, and questions. And part of the definition of bandits is that they usually are, you know, these robbers are, uh, that target travelers. Mm. You see, travelers. So I mean, so for, how uh, even though it's a slight diversion, but how bandits were able to bring down a fighter jet? Uh, that story was with fully I, I told. I think uh, it's, it's ridiculous. But, but let me bring in John. Let is, me bring in. So, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. John in uh, Epoma. Good morning. John in Epoma. Oh, uh, you, you've gone. You know, uh, John has gone. See if you can get us uh, back again. <laughs> um, so, um, Mr. Yuri, I've said it from the beginning. Some of us, probably we visionaries, um, we, 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 we have foresight. <laughs> okay. And I said it from the beginning that these people are not bandits. Stop using the word bandit. Oh, now, okay. Okay. why are we afraid to use the word, to use the correct word for these people? These people are terrorists. Yeah. I will say a bandit. Bring down a, a, fighter, a, a, a jet. fighter jet. A bandit. Will, a bandit carry grenades that is meant for to, de 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 to, 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 to destroy our tanks. Well, well that, that's, the, that's the. Then you call them bandits. That, Why are yeah. you afraid to call them their names? That's a terrorist. I don't know about being afraid, but you that's prescribe, the. You that's prescribe the nomenclature. That have, call, that have not carried grenades, that have not fought any military, you prescribe them, then you can't do anything about this, and we are rubbing their heads, calling them names. Uh, we call them uh, unknown gunmen. Yeah. Um, we call them uh, <laughs> what are those names? Yeah, they are in their stock piles and ammunition. Uh, yes. Shea Gumi took photographs with them, paraded the level of equipment these guys have to, to, to terrorize the country. And this is where the case of perception comes in. Okay, I've got to take that now. When people view all this, they come to conclusions. Okay, uh, I promise Hello. that. Come. Hey, good morning, Adash. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's from George. Okay. Good morning. My question is this. The rating of uh, his house. Put on them and invited him. He invited him first, and he didn't show up for them to do that thing, operation, or whatever you could say it is. Okay, then. Now, my problem is this. There is always this double standard. And perception is very, very important. Why do I say so? These bandits, some of people at the name of our say said that um, they are doing business. They are, they, are commis they, are, they are commercial criminals. That's where they are different from the Uru and the um, uh, Kano. Now, they, they now have the capacity to bring down a plate. In fact, when, when that thing, when that story came up, I had to go to my dictionary, I said all the dictionary, I went to Google to know the meaning of the terrorists. And everything they are doing falls within the, uh, the terrorism. So what is the attorney general waiting for? To prescribe them and declare them as terrorists. Yeah. That is the worry. You know, so they must be coordinated as, I don't think they must be coordinated as, coordinated is not east and not west, simultaneous by the military. If they, don't, if they don't have the ability to do it, let them get machinery to do it. Because uh, it, in the way they are going, it's going to continue all of us. So they think once the plane of uh, petrol is not the issue, very soon they will start, they start you know, laying seats on the way to the airport or to the, the railway station. Thank, what the hell is going on in Nigeria? Thank, thank you. Much, yeah. Thank you very much, Ada, for calling in. And um, we'll, we'll take a quick break now, but we'll be right back on top of this subject again, and we'll continue to take your call. Stay with us, please. Okay, welcome back, and um, we're looking at the complications in how to handle uh, Sunday Boho, uh, yeah, Sunday Boho uh, Chief Sunday Adeyemo, aka Sunday Iboho. Now that he's been arrested in uh, Kutonu, uh, the rest is up now to um, all sorts of diplomatic and um, legal uh, aspects. Uh, but just as we were going talking about bandits, and um, the, because bandits, the Nigerian. Uh, Air Force said uh, ba bandits had brought down one of their planes. And um, so, may, well, I'm among those who have been looking at a bandit. How could a bandit do that? Uh, because the concept I had of a bandit. So I checked it out, and um, what it says here that um, he's an armed thief. Uh, it's a, the word is in older use, one who attacks people while they are traveling. Um, you know, bandits attack the travelers just outside of town, that kind of a thing. So, how can well, the news is the news. What mm -hmm. it is is what it is, because we got a statement directly from the um, head of the um, Air Force that bandits that people think of in terms of thieves, 
people who attack uh, uh, who, who attack travelers, uh, especially in lawless areas, actually have the wherewithal to bring down a Nigerian Air Force plane? Well, we just take what we got. That's what we were told. You know, I, I, it's either the airplane is like a battered damfo <laughs> that has lost its speed because you know a fighter jet is configured to travel at a faster speed than even the commercial uh, aircraft. Yeah. And, and if that happened, it's ridiculous. But let me ask some simple questions like we have asked. Recently we read, except it's fake news, that a truck fell in the southeastern part of the country and dislodged ammunition. Who are the, who are the carriers of this ammunition? Though my president once admitted that some splinter groups in Libya mm -hmm. are bringing ammunition to Nigeria. And I, why don't they take the ammunition to Rwanda, to Ghana, to Benin Republic? What, why why is it Nigeria? Here? Why is it so, Nigeria? When at the time in this country we were reading in the newspapers four containers of tramadol imported to Nigeria, I was asking, who brings these things in? Okay. Who will use them? We now have a radicalized society. And again, on this case of Chief Sunday Adeyemo, how did he escape to Benin Republic? We are the customs officers. Mm. We are the immigration officers. Or is it only that when but goods are imported to Nigeria, you now start going you, you, after shops and things like well, you that? Could it's, also it's ask, you could also ask the same of those who use the Nadeko route back in the day. It's, it's talking about the system. Yes, back it's in the true, day. We need to reinforce you know, our you know. system. So where were all those people? And it's part of good government. Nade, Nade, Nade That's what we are open. saying. I don't know. We need defensiveness. Mr. Atuebu in uh, Imota, good morning. Atuebu in Imota. <laughs> Mr. Atuebu in Imota, can you hear us? I'm hearing you clear. Yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the order of the around you. Thank you. Please, what we are talking is this. Government is free to maybe arrest anybody who is uh, proven to be lawless. But there's one aspect we see. This uh, bandits that are kidnapping, killing, maiming, bringing down a whole fighter jet. See, today, as I'm, with you, I'm talking with you, it has been seen as just bandits. Bandits uh, by the gate of God are boom in the area of maybe one stretch, one three, where we measure the bandits. It's just not only to me that we lay vehicle around the desert when we are traveling, we call it magic. Now, people like those people, because of the wrong inevitability in, in being displayed in Nigerian society by the people in government, that makes people to begin to agitate. Because nobody cannot deny me of what is rightly mine, that I will not complain. It's not possible. And Nigerians are complaining. Those people complaining now are seen as terrorists, are seen to bring them and kill them. Why do killing people, they carry our children every day, we carry our money to go and give them to buy more arms, to the right of the more. And that's why they have free power. Because they can't be strong, there is no, no negotiation, no negotiation, and not that the people that derive them, who will agree that there is no negotiation, who will not exchange anything with, with any party. In the way you can now, I go there, and I get them arrested, overpower them, arrested them, and bring them up, we see them, we know yet that there was no any exchange of money. But you go after the film, giving all them our, our oil, our oil money from here, to carry to give them, to buy more arms, to put them very well. Okay. Preparing them for what oh. I know they have in mind. They are preparing them for something. Okay, Mr. Tuebu, thank you very much uh, for calling in. And um, okay, we, we, we got onto this bandits thing and uh, the bandit and the, them bringing down a fighter jet. Uh, but I don't want us to sort of, um, the, uh, what, what is the word now? Uh, no, distract no. ourselves. <laughs> uh, because uh, we we're looking at the legal complications or maybe aspects of now that Sunday Boho has been cited in uh, Kutonu, not just cited, is actually, according to his lawyers, under arrest. In fact, there are those who are saying he's not being treated very well. Uh, again, one doesn't have any access 
the S DSS is not uh, communicating, uh, which is not strange. Uh, so we don't know. Uh, but the, 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 lawyers, uh, uh, the lawyers are saying that he's actually not enjoying himself uh, uh, right now as where, where, where he is. And so there are those who are concerned about his, his dignity, uh, his freedoms uh, under the law, and all that kind of, of, of thing. But the reason there's this whole, this whole uproar is that many are not sure that he will receive justice, just as they were, that, just as was the case for, with Nam Dekano, uh, who now has to be brought back. Say, look, where is that rule of law guarantee that openness where we can talk about this, but federal government has arraigned Kanu, for instance, has arraigned Kanu. So the rest, we'll see how, how, how it oh, goes. It um, yes. People are fearful, it would appear, going by what you see on social media, that in the case of uh, Chief Sunday Iboho, uh, they don't think he can get a fair trial, and that's why they are saying, uh, no, he shouldn't be brought him. back here. Mm -hmm. don't, don't bring him in here. In fact, that, I think, is the whole basis of the explanation that political fugitives are exempt from all of this. Mm -hmm. So all that Mr. That Chief Sunday Boho got up to, uh, well, this is now being put in the, you know, under the category of political activities, right? Mm -hmm. That is still subject to the discretion of the Benin Republic, you know. So okay. if, oh, oh, oh. If, if they tilt more in the area of asylum, he will not be released. Okay. And if the government wins the argument of extradition, he will be sent back to Nigeria. And the big question now is, does Nigeria possess that posture of the capacity of giving justice? Because even if he's brought back here under Section 36 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, we still have what we call the presumption of innocence. Mm -hmm. The case must be proved beyond all reasonable doubt. So do we have the committed uh, judiciary also? Do, will, he be, will he have his fundamental human rights? Because if you look at, and if you go back to the agitation aspect, if you look at um, Article 20 of the Charter of Human and People's Rights, the African Charter of uh, Human and People's Rights, we, people have right to self uh, realize, realization. You, you, you can drive that agitation. Okay. So, so it depends on how you go about So the big question now is that with the federal government approach this issue without bias? And that is the position of justice. It has also and been that's said, the big question you know, now. there's another side to what you've just said, which is, uh, you know, you're spot on. But uh, even those who are, you know, minded to agitate for mm. self-determination and all of that, uh, it has been said, also have to go about it in a particular process, yes. way. Yes. There are processes. Mm. So these are things that will be evaluated, whether processes were exceeded or that kind of a thing. And um, this is where people are having apprehensions. But in the meantime, Mr. Titus has called in from Macready. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Yari. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And thank you, I agree to other crew in the studio. Sure, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I want to just uh, make a, a little contribution here. Go ahead. We, we in Nigeria, in most of the other parts, general state inclusive, are suffering a great work of injustice in this country. You can only hear the judiciary talking when something happens to someone who is not from Sano. Whoever is from this address, Little Bird, um, South East, South West, or whatever, does not enjoy any area of justice from, this, from the authority of Nigeria. We, we are saying the board is being arrested for what crime has he committed. We, we have had uh, the leadership of Mirati uh, Allah. Uh, I've been terrorizing the whole country, claiming ownership of things like that. Nobody has ever invited any of them, nor arrested any of them. If that is being negotiated with, the, the national authority will go, they will get somebody to uh, negotiate with that. Our security men will be there. And then nothing will happen, and then the door cannot be called for any negotiations to ask him why he's been getting things. 
I believe that they invaded the house, arms, or whatever. Fulani people don't come everywhere. They can everywhere in the bush or the street. Nothing happens to them, but that is the country we belong to. Okay. Some of us were highly against uh, uh, the leadership of this man that so called the president when he was. Ah, 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 ah. No, 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 no. Oh, well, yeah. Mr. Titus, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate your call. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you couldn't go into areas of being disrespectful to the president. That's why we had to sort of, you know, end our conversation there. But before then, thank you for the perceptions, mm. the perceptions that, you know, Titus was, you know, putting forward. That this is his perception. We, we're not getting a fair shake. We're not getting a fair deal at all. Uh, I suppose this is what needs to concern government. You mean, even though they've heard it and reheard it, maybe even overheard it, um, but they still need to deal with this attitude of people having these perceptions that nothing is happening with me. Yeah. As um, Titus said, uh, okay, right. for okay. our people. Okay, right. If you are and married... It, even as the federal government continues to say, bring out the facts, bring out the papers, you know, go, the president said at the uh, 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 Arise uh, interview, go bring records from the Ministry of Establishment and all these all this sectionalism and uh, nepotism that you're talking about. So, two very diametrically opposite submissions. If you are married and you don't treat your wife very well, at some point in that marriage, your wife will revolt. Your wife will react. Now, this is what has happened and this is what Nigerians are saying. If you are not treating them equally, mm -hmm. A section will react. Mm -hmm. Now, we have not had a section. We have had sections that are reacting. Some that are even quiet, that are silenced. They are actually reacting. But because they are saying the way things are going, they can't even come out. <laughs> now, we are talking about self-determination. Yes. You should take cognizance of the fact that President Buhari mm -hmm. supported it with some other countries. The, he supported uh, self determinations and he was even uh, in 2016, he said the same thing. In 2018, he said the same thing. Even in the, uh, uh, well, um, it was this house that uh, in London, he said the same thing. That's he was out. advocating for it for some other countries. So, in your country now, we are talking of self determination. You think. It shouldn't happen. No, Mr. when you have not. Mr. When, President said when, the, the unity of Nigeria is is non-negotiable. My my non take on the unity you know. of Nigeria for me, I have been saying this like forever, mm -hmm. and I will not change. Mm -hmm. Nothing will change it. It is not negotiable. We will have one Nigeria. Nobody is going anywhere. What I am asking for, let us sit down and so fairness. And let us have fairness. Equity. Equity. That is all I'm asking. Good for. morning, Bola and Ibado, and you know, apologies for keeping you waiting. Go ahead, sir. Good morning. Thank you for calling. Good morning. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Um, yes. Just like he said, the president said the um, I use the just non Um, I have been I have been privileged to travel to the north so many times. I've been to Kanu, I've been to uh, Karaba and some other places. Do you know if you which are on the way to Kanu, you'll be surprised that there is no single checkpoint between Abuja and Kaduna, Kaduna to Kanu. No single checkpoint. Authoritatively, from Abuja to Yola is is is, is over. I'm one thousand three hundred something kilometers. There is no single checkpoint between Abuja and Kumbi. There are about two or three checkpoints between Kumbi and uh, uh, Yola. But coming up, it's British. Just like the way our borders were locked in the south and open in the north, where ammunition was coming most. You talked about uh, uh, drugs coming to Nigeria. Let him know drugs from Nigeria goes to the north. So what I'm not seeing. All right. I, I thank you for the observation, Bola. Really appreciate you calling in. Um, well, gentlemen, uh, this is what we have on our hand because we're really, this is the home stretch. You know, we're, we're about to hit the tape. This is the home stretch if you're doing the 440 meters. Remember that last 100 years. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, here we are. Uh, again, we're going to have to wait on tender hooks uh, because um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you know, our diplomatic experts, uh, our legal experts, uh, experts working for Sunday Boho, uh, the legal experts, all of these people are going to have to get in on this case. Um, they're fighting it, quite frankly. And every, a, a lot depends on what uh, the Republic does.
how Benin Republic interprets all of these statutes, right? Mm -hmm. But whatever but, but, they are going to do, whatever the Benin Republic is going to do, it cannot still go out of the African Charter they all signed to. So whatever, the, uh, it, it will go to court. So they cannot, I don't believe that Benin Republic will matriot Sunday ago because they signed <laughs> to a law that everyone okay. is innocent until... <laughs> okay. My, my big uh, question uh, again. Let, let, let me take the last caller. Okay. Let me take the last caller so that we can have the last few minutes. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Joseph <laughs> in Abuja. Yeah, Uncle Mary, good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. I, I love what you are doing. Uh, kind of you. Yes, sir. Um, if you born um, children or child, and uh, one is stealing your money every day by day, and you are warning, 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 he refuses to listen, would you still continue being the father or to disown the person? So what exactly what are you saying? Is, what I'm saying is that why would... I, I stand by the last caller. I have traveled the northern side. There is no checkpoint. Okay. But come to the east, to the west, there are checkpoints everywhere. In, in my area, in my area, uh, Imo State, every pole there is police, army, and checkpoints. So that means to say that we are, they, they, some section of people are criminalizing us. Okay. If you marry and the marriage is not working, is it by force to be your friend? Is it by force to live with you? Okay. Why not them? Okay, and the girl on Sunday go <laughs> and the night the car. Why are they doing the thing just because they say, don't do all these things, it's not good. Okay. Uh, I, I want to thank you very much for calling in, uh, and you're going to be our last caller. Uh, really appreciate uh, your call. Yes, uh, you had the floor. My big question, <clears throat> Nam Dekan was rearrested, has been brought back to continue with the prosecution. But after that, we still have a record that in Zamfara Kebi and Niger State, about 1,031 Nigerians were killed in one month. All right? We still have the inflation going haywire. We still have the threat of telling us the benchmark price for the pump price of petroleum should be 1,000 Naira. So how are we going to solve the problems that are prompting this agitation? Because the Chinese say you cannot carve a rotting wood. So I think the government should look inwards, probably go and study the real essence of government, it is to enhance the fortunes of the people. I'm sure government and knows that. And ensure government that the people are harmonized. Because yeah, okay. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, can two, can two people work together, yeah, that, except they be agreed? You see now, why did you go and bring that? Where's the Quranic version? <laughs> well, where's where's, where's the Quranic one I will use to balance it? Anyway, gentlemen, um, <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Mr. Lainka Daniels, uh, lawyer and social commentator. Mr. Jide Ologo, uh, thank you as well. We've run out of time. Thank Thank you indeed uh, out there as well for, for you know, uh, calling in and making the program what it is. We missed one or two guys, you know, one or two family members. Where was Mazi Okora for? Where was uh, okay. Mr. George in Lagos? Uh, 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 there are quite a number of them. Uh, yeah. If I didn't mention you, it's not because you're not also equally esteemed in our eyes. Uh, so that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folari. Bye-bye for now.